Hi everyone, it's Jessica here, and I'm really excited because Winnie and Walter and Chibichonics are having a collaboration. Today, I'll be sharing the slide up card featuring the My Precious set from Winnie and Walter. So let's get started. I stamped several images and clear heat and boss them off camera since it took me some time to plan and figure out where I want to place everything. Then I'm trimming the top of the watercolor panel at a slanted angle. This will be the only part that I'm not inking or coloring on. Next, I'm die cutting the circle shapes I chased earlier. I ended up using two different sets of circle dies from Spellbinders. If you are interested in the exact size I used, be sure to check out my blog. After that, I erase the pencil marks and emboss the top piece with the next level gemstone embossing folder. Now I'm going to add some colors with my Distress inks. I really wanted a saturated bow background, so it's natural for me to pick rainbow colors. I started with some of my favorite blues, worked slowly towards the oranges and reds, then the greens, and eventually added some pinks and teals as well. I'm going to speed up the ink blending process, and I'll catch you guys when I'm done. So here is my finished background. As always, I'm going to create some texture by spritzing some water droplets. Then we're moving on to watercolor the stamped images. 
I'm using my Zig Clean Color Rear Brush Pens and a water brush today for simple coloring. Most of the time, I like to wet the surface first before I drop in colors, but since we're watercoloring very small areas, you can definitely skip this step. I'm also not that concerned with the light source or the technique, just coloring as I go. While you watched me color, I thought I'd share a little story. So this is actually the first Winnie Walter stamp set I bought. I think I got it from Simon's stamp, and even though I didn't know Winnie Walter at the time, I was instantly captivated by the design. So what do I do? I head straight to their shop, and I remember having this major crush on the flawless diamond cutaway. I was like, I have to have it. And this was all before I fell in love with the Evelyn T design stamps and the word cutaways. Anyways, I thought it'd be interesting to share my first Winnie & Walter stamp because it's still a favorite of mine. If you still remember yours, we would love to know in the comments below. By the way, all of the colors and inks I've used in this project will be listed over on my blog. I've also sped up the coloring so you can watch the entire process, and I'll catch you guys when I'm done.
After coloring my gemstones, I'm adding a wash of color for the background. It's very simple, nothing fancy. I didn't even color the entire circle because I feel like the white edges add to the organic look. Then I'm going to spritz on paint to create more textures. I cover the stamp images with masking paper and place a die cut into a box so they'll protect both my work surface and the gemstone watercoloring. I press on some blueprint sketch distressed ink onto an acrylic block and use a damp brush to flick the ink. I only added the stress ink splatters to the larger three circles. For the diamond one, I used wild honey, and for the hexagon gem on the right, I used lucky clover. I decided to spritz white acrylic paint to all of the circle die cuts as well. And guess what? I'm not done yet. I went back and grabbed the ink blended background so I could spritz Wind Castella shimmer on it. This is definitely one of the cases when my go hard or go home personality strikes again. It's hard to see the shimmer on camera, that's why I've been tapping on this thing like crazy. When I picked it up to look closer, I was like, oh wow, I thought nothing was coming out. But the shimmer is definitely there and I quite like the end result. Now we're moving on to set up the LED circuits. I'm using the Chibitronics kit you see here and I'm starting out by making the battery holder. After making sure that a flap opening is facing the left, I secure it down with some double sided tape. I'll explain why the direction is important later in the video. Next, I sketch the circuit pathways and cut the copper tape in half so it'll be easier to manipulate. Then I'm just following the sketch lines. I find that it's a little challenging when it comes to turning angles. What I do is first pull the tape back on itself, second push my nail down at a diagonal angle, and third pull the rest of the tape towards the direction of the turn. Please excuse the poor quality on these clips, the sun is setting outside and zooming in doesn't help. Here's another demonstration with wider painter's tape. You can see that I folded the tape back, and I'm picturing a square at the tip. Then using my nail, I'm going to hold down the corner diagonally, and when I'm finished, you'll see that I get a clean and sharp corner that will still conduct the current well. If you are making a right turn, just make sure to use your right hand to press down on the tape. Hopefully, you can see the diagonal line that I pre-fold here. I just want to show the mistakes I made when I was sticking down the second path. Here I use my left hand and since the diagonal angle is pointing towards the left, 
it was a little awkward to turn to the right. And you can see that there's a little bit of overhang at the top. There is of course no right or wrong way to lay down the circuits because I made this mistake repeatedly throughout the entire thing, but the end result still works fine. Anyways, we're in the home stretch now, and I'm making my way back to the other side of the hanging flap. So here are the two ends of the circuit, but watch, some black magic is about to happen. Now you see me, now you don't. Anyhow, this part, I'm just showing you that I could have taken a shortcut here, but part of the tape will be suspended, so I took the longer route. Finally, you can smooth out the copper tape Stick on the LED lights and test if they light up. Then I'm going to adhere thin strips of foam tape around the battery so it stays in place. I did double up the phone tape so that it will be higher than the battery itself. This way the circuit will only be looped when we press down. Other times, one end of the copper tape will be suspended so that no LED lights will light up and the battery life will be conserved. Remember that we left an opening when we were making the battery holder? It's because we can insert a little piece of cardstock that will block the connection between one end of the copper tape and the battery. When it is inserted, the lights will light up even if the battery spot is being pushed down. It's just another security measure if you are mailing the card. Finally, I adhered all the pieces and die cut the shine script cut away from gold foil cardstock as my sentiment and that finishes off the card. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope that you find it helpful and are willing to try making your own light up card. It takes a little more time and effort but the result is definitely worth it. For more inspirations, be sure to head over to Winnie and Walter's blog and I'll see you guys next time.